Hello friends, today let's solve the largest one bordered square. Given a 2D grid of zeros and ones, return the number of elements in the largest square subgrid that had all ones all its border. Border or zero if such a subgrid does not exist in the grid. So that means we just need to find a square that uh, uh, on its border uh, are all ones. There is no zero on the border, but we do not care whether there is zero uh, in the center. So basically, this is just a, I think it's a typical dynamic programming problem because if you have solved the maximum <coughs> square problem. It's just, uh, I think this is the, uh, there is some modification from that problem. We just need to calculate the accumulated uh, continuous ones from left to right and uh, calculate the accumulated uh, continuous ones from top to bottom. So, that means we should uh, cache that uh, accumulated uh, continuous one. So that's the reason we will use dynamic programming. We can quickly get this value if we save that value. Um, let's uh, explain what this 3D array means. Um, usually we will just use a 2D array. But now we need to cache two variables so we can use a 3D array. And in the third dimension, we save two uh, things. The dp i plus 1, j plus 1, 0 represents accumulated continuous one from top to down. Uh, for example, in the grid 2, 2, we save the Accumulated continuous one from top to down in the DP three three zero. Why we use a uh, one more? Then uh, because if we need to handle the zero, we do not need to check whether it is valid. So that's the reason we uh, make the DP array one larger than the grid array. So for the left to right, we save the accumulated continuous one in the dp i plus one j plus one one so in this case dp three three zero is two because from top to down there is two accumulated one and the dp three three one is three because there is three continuous one from left to right we just need to iterate the whole grid. If the current element is 1, we can form a square. If the current variable, uh, current element is 0, we just uh, that uh, all the continuous from top to down and from left to right just be 0 because all of these should be continuous. So we just need to handle this part. If the current element is 1, we first get the minimum of the this uh, part and this part because that means the largest possible length of the square. Then we check whether it is, can form a square because here we just uh, know two, uh, two sides. We also need to know these two sides. How do we check whether we can form a valid square? Actually, we can also use the DP array. We just uh, need to minus the length of the possible square. You see, this is i plus 1, j plus 1, 0. For this part, we need to know the from top to down, whether it has a valid or continuous one. So we just need to check i plus 1, the same row, different column, j plus 1 plus 1 minus k. That means k is the possible uh, side length. And this is 0 because this is from top to down. This part we need to know the from left to right. So we use the 1. Uh, 
and uh, this is the same column, different row. So we also minus the side length. This is k. Uh, why do we not just use the length, which is the minimum of these two sides? Because you see, you imagine if the length is six, but uh, these two uh, value are less than six. That means we cannot form a square length of six, but Inside this square, we can for, uh, form a square, the length of 4. So we need to keep check whether we can form a smaller square. So that's a, the that's a reason we use our inner loop to check. The inner loop is the, the k means the length of the possible square. It starts from the length of the square, but it should be greater than the global max side length because when the length is less than the max, there is no need to calculate. So then we will get the minimum length of these two sides. When the length 2 is greater or equal than the k, that means we can form a square, the side length equal to the k. You should notice that we should use a greater or equal than not just equal, because maybe this dp, this value and this value have something greater than the possible length of the square. So if it is, great, it is greater, it should be valid. So in the end, we just return the max times max. So in conclusion, our algorithm is first new this 3D DP array, and then we iterate the whole grid. If the current grid element is zero, we just let uh, this two value to zero. Otherwise, we check the possible largest square use these two sides. Okay, let's write the code. So if this grid equal to none, or the grid dot length equal to zero, we just return zero. Otherwise, we get the grid dot length and n is grid zero dot length with a 3D DP array. DP new m, there will be m plus one. n plus one, there will be two. We also need a global max. It is, at first is zero. Then we iterate this grid i plus plus. For int j equal to zero, j less than n j plus plus. So a simple case: if grid i j equal to zero, we just let these two um, accumulate one equal to zero, because it ends here. J plus one one equal to zero. Else, if it's one. We just use a previous cached value. Zero will equal to dp one plus. Uh, that is the from top to down. So that means the same row, different. Uh, same column, different row. So there should be different row. Same column, zero plus one, and the dpi j, uh, j plus one one equal to. That should be the same row, different column, so i plus 1, j1 one plus 1. Okay, you should see the benefit of this one more, because in this case, we do not check whether uh, ij is valid, i plus 1 is valid, or something else. It should also be, it should always be valid the index. And because by default, the value is 0, so it is uh, it makes sense. Then we get the length. That will be the minimum of this two value zero and dpi plus one j plus one one. Okay, we get a minimum. Then we will try to get the to form a valid square k greater than max k minus minus. The length 2 will be the mass the minimum dpi plus 1, which will minus a k plus 1 because the two 
sides are inclusive. This is inclusive, so we need a plus one. That means the different row, which means we get this part right, different row, but same column. That there should be j plus one. And we use the from left to right. We need to know this accumulated one, so there should be a one. And another, there should be i plus one. I, uh, there will be j plus 1 minus k plus 1. That would be 0. That means the, uh, the same row, different column. And we need to know this uh, accumulated from top to down uh, once. So there will be use this 0. Once, if the length 2 is greater or equal than the k, that means we can fold a square the side length over this k. So max equal to mass dot max max and k finally just to return the max times max okay seems we finish that okay thank you for watching see you next time